Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Radek Rokoszynski. I'm a senior trainer at Worldwide School, and I have a pleasure of conducting uh, tonight's webinar uh, for you. Uh, first of all, uh, the usual question, um, can you hear me? Um, I hope yes, uh, you can type it in a chat uh, in the bottom right hand corner, uh, just to let me know, okay, I'm getting some yeses. So I assume that everyone can hear me well. Thank you very much. Um, and as you probably know, um, tonight we are going to talk about some, uh, well, new words and, and phrases that have finally been added to English language uh, dictionaries. So uh, the word new might be a, a bit misleading because uh, these words and, and phrases aren't exactly uh, new in the meaning that had they have been uh, coined recently, but uh, they've been they've been uh, good evening. They've been officially added to, to dictionaries, and we can we can find them uh, in the official um, English language corpus. Um, okay, so uh, we'll 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 go um, alphabetically. Uh, but um, as as you know, a language is a, is a living thing. It, it uh, evolves constantly, uh, and lots of lots of new words and phrases are being added um, to to dictionaries every every single year. Uh, well, especially last year, which was kind of kind of special and, and difficult for for many people. And um, yeah. So um, as I said, the the, the words um, are in alphabetical order. Most of them are kind of um, informal uh, slang terms, uh, which can spice up your, your informal language register a little bit. So let's let's have a look. Um, I will be asking you some some questions before before I give you the explanation. Because um, uh, many of these words will be like blended words, like two words put together to, to create a, a new item. So um, I hope and I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to, to guess uh, meanings of um, some of them before I, I give you the exact meaning and explanation. All right, so let's let's start, um, just not to keep you waiting any any longer. Um, so uh, the first uh, phrase is kind of kind of strange. Uh, the word is uh, "Am I right?" And actually, this is hmm, sounds like "Am I right?" This is kind of like a, like a clue. Um, as to the, the meaning of this of this vocabulary item, uh, because it's actually three three words put together into one and spelled like this. Um, so uh, yeah, it's just like kind of like informal spelling of of the phrase "Am I right?" Um, which which is being used to to elicit agreement or or used uh, facetiously, uh, which is like humorously uh, to to undermine or mock um, something that we have said before it. Uh, the preceding phrase. Uh, for example, my wife is the luckiest woman on earth. Am I right? Or something like uh, college admissions essays are exercises in creative writing. Am I right? Uh, so three words have been blended into, into one and we have something strange like, like this. Am I right? Um, used in some very specific um, contexts. Um, the next one is battle royale. Um, it's somehow connected with um, with pop culture. Um, any ideas as to the, the meaning of this of this phrase? What what can it mean? Because um, well, there's been a Japanese film by this title, two parts even, um, and there's like famous pop culture series um, also based on on this on this idea. So maybe maybe someone uh, can come up with uh, with something. Okay. So basically, um, speaking about culture, about, about pop culture, uh, Battle Royale uh, relates to, to a specific genre of, of fiction, uh, movies or books or television shows or video games um, that, that basically feature, features um, elimination, fights to the death. Yeah, so last person standing wins. Uh, probably the, the, the most famous example of, of such um, uh, such piece from from pop culture would be uh, the the Hunger Games. Um, probably you've seen the films, maybe you, you you've um, read the book. Like the Hunger Games is a battle royale trilogy of books set in in dystopian um, future. So that's battle royale for you. Um, the next item, bingeable. Um, well, comes from the verb to binge. Uh, what's the meaning of of binge? I guess we are all familiar with 
video streaming services nowadays, and we all use them, uh, searchable, not, not quite searchable. Um, if, you, if you binge something, you um, consume it in, in big amounts. You consume a lot of it. So, so nowadays, the, this word is mostly used to describe some, some uh, TV series uh, presented by, by uh, various um, streaming services, uh, like, like Netflix, for example. And um, yeah, this, this word is used to describe, um, yeah, for example, a TV series that is likely to be binge watched. Yeah? If you binge watch, uh, well, you watch the whole season on one day yeah, or over two days. So basically, you start watching, sit for a few hours and, and finish after the last episode. Uh, of course, binge uh, doesn't have to relate to, 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 to TV series. It can also be, be, talk, uh, be used to, to uh, relate to food or drink. Yeah. If you, if you binge drink, then you go from bar to bar, having one drink after, after another. So I guess uh, binge watching TV series is a bit more healthy. Um, some examples uh, of how to, how to use uh, this adjective bingeable. Um, have you seen the new season of Stranger Things? It's so bingeable. Or uh, you can also use it mm, to talk about food. Yeah, like limit the amount of bingeable food in your home. Well snacks rule anyways okay so that's that's the word uh, bingeable um biohacking that's the next term we are going to discuss um what can this one mean any any ideas what is biohacking sounds a bit strange but it's uh, getting um more and more popular um so so basically um Probably we, we've heard about some, some chips being implanted into, into human bodies. Um, but it's not necessarily um, you know, about putting chips uh, into, into, into your muscles or brain or wherever. Um, this is the general term uh, which, which uh, refers to, to the practice of, of making your body um, work better. Uh, by, by you know, optimizing it or by using hacker principles. So um, it can be done through technological interventions. Probably, yeah, it's already happening and we'll have more and more of that in, in not so distant future. Um, so like microchips um, implanted or simply by, by taking up some um, health activities or uh, taking in various supplements. And I guess we as a nation, um, pioneers and, and real winners when it comes to the amount of, of various dietary supplements um, we digest, right? So this is uh, biohacking and some examples of how to, how to use this word. Um, I'm experimenting with some biohacking. Well, not necessarily meaning that I'm, I'm implanting some chips into my brain, but simply I'm changing my, my, my lifestyle to be more and more healthy. Or uh, biohacking is the process of making changes to your lifestyle in order to hack your body's biology and feel your best. So um, different ways to biohack your, your body from, from yeah, chips in, in implanted into your, into your system to just changing your health uh, activities or taking supplements. Um, buzzy. Well, probably you're familiar with the word buzz. Uh, what's the meaning of, of, of buzzy and um, what do you think? Have you encountered this, this word before? in some media or texts or films if something is buzzy if someone is feeling buzzy any any ideas okay so no idea <laughs> all right so let me let me explain um well basically something that is buzzy it simply generates a lot of enthusiasm or excitement uh slightly older meaning of of the word buzzy yeah exactly lively and exciting very good um, a slightly older meaning um, of the word buzzy is uh, like slightly intoxicated uh, or overstimulated from, from liquor or, or drug. So that was uh, the first meaning of that. But now it can also be used to describe something that, well, makes you feel enthusiastic and, and excited. Uh, for example, uh, there's always a buzzy atmosphere in that new Italian restaurant around the corner or the, the city of Geneva is buzzy enough to make a memorable trip so that's that's buzzy for you. Uh, drugs sound we yeah <laughs> absolutely don't do drugs uh, okay then uh, contouring well probably ladies are, are or should be familiar with with this word which 
is used by a lot of um, YouTubers uh, giving some tutorials about about what? What is this word related to? Because finally it's been um, officially added and, and it's kind of like the buzzword, the trendy word. Um, it's of course related to, um, to makeup. Um, so contouring is simply a makeup application style. Um, technically speaking, in which uh, foundation and bronzer are used to create definition along the natural bone structure of the face. Um, so lots of lots of tutorials available on YouTube, Twitter, whatever, all kind of social media, uh, people presenting like best ways of contouring your face or putting on your your makeup. Uh, for example, uh, you may want to save highlighting and contouring for special occasions or days when you just have more time to get ready. Right. Um, douchey. That's mm, another item. Um, I'm sure you must have heard the word like uh, douche or douchebag, which are not at all nice. But um, what's the meaning of douchey? Any any ideas? Anyone? Maybe you have you have heard the word or seen it somewhere. So what might it what might it mean? Do you have any any ideas? Not really, alright. So let me let me explain. Um, something, well, or someone that is douchey is uh, simply annoying, offensive, or dislikable. Or a, a douchey person is kind of like a pompous jerk, like a, a guy that we don't really want to have anything to to do with. Um, and uh, we can we can use this word, for example, in such uh, sentences or or collocations like, "Well, he seems pretty douchey to me," uh, so annoying, dislikable. Yeah, I I don't want to see this guy. Or um, very typical um, collocation: a douchey guy or a douchey uh, behavior. If somebody behaves like in an annoying, offensive way. We can call um, such such behavior douchey. Okay, um, echo anxiety. Um, well, this this term probably explains it itself. Um, any any ideas? Uh, maybe you feel some echo anxiety, or or not really. What what does it mean? And when when can we use it? Right. So, um, of course, thinking about the condition of our, of our planet nowadays, uh, echo anxiety is a kind of feeling of anxiety um, caused by some environmental perils. Yeah. Uh, so, if we think about climate change uh, or you know being helpless, not believing that we can we can change something or stop global warming or anything like this. Uh, and we fear potential consequences for, for, for ourselves and for, for the next uh, generations uh, that will live on this planet uh, after we're long gone. This kind of feeling um, has been defined as echo anxiety. So, um, for example, we might, we might use this word in kind of like uh, reports from last week's global summit have only worsened his echo anxiety, which has already taken a toll on his physical and mental well-being. Yeah, so some, some people seem to be taking it um, really, really hard. So that's echo anxiety for you. Mm. The next word, um, empty, actually a phrase, empty suit, um, kind of like from, from uh, corporate and, and political uh, language. So any ideas? Who, who's an empty suit and, and what, what can it mean? And when can we use this, uh, this phrase? Who is an empty suit? Any ideas? Well, um, if you think about about oh, someone's typing something, so let's wait. Um, okay, very close. Absolutely, somebody, somebody uh, like an executive, a manager, an official. Uh, who is uh, regarded as incompetent, ineffectual, uh, has no leadership qualities, no creativity, no empathy, incompetent. That's right. Very good. Uh, so that's an empty suit. So simply um, wrong person for the job. Yeah? Mm, for example, uh, their executive search came up with one empty suit after another. Yeah? So they couldn't find the, the right man. For the for the position, or um, an example from from American press uh, from just a few weeks ago, uh, 
Trump's team has tried to paint Biden as an empty suit trying to disguise the threat of socialism. So um, this expression is mostly used in corporate and, and political um, culture. So that's empty, empty suit for you. Um, gender reveal. Well, the word gender itself, well, <laughs> is very, very popular in our country, not in the maybe positive way, uh, has some bad press. But what is what is gender reveal? Because um, maybe, maybe you've heard the phrase, um, what kind of event is this? Because it is a kind of event, gender reveal. Any any ideas as to, to the meaning of this? Sexual coming out? Um, in a way, but um, not like, like, like uh, you know, revealing your sexual orientation. It's more about um, revealing the, the gender of your unborn baby. So, um, you know, you can, well, nowadays probably organize some online meeting um, on, some, on some social platform uh, or, yeah, basically that's a, like a small party or gathering of your friends and family uh, where you inform them simply if you're going to have a, a boy or a, or a girl. So that's, that's um, yeah, gender, gender reveal, referring to, to the baby that is going to be, to be born. Uh, yeah, for example, you can get a gender reveal cake with pink or blue filling hidden inside. So um, that's that gender reveal for you. Okay, uh, glamping. Well, that's a very interesting word. Actually, it's, it's a blend of, of two words. Um, any, any ideas like um, what, what two words have been blended together to, to, to make up this one? Luxury camping. Very good answer, exactly, that's, that's glamping. So it's like a mixture of, of two words, glamorous and and camping, so uh, yeah, has nothing. Uh, yeah, has nothing uh, to do with with old school camping, sleeping in a tent, you know, on the, in a sleeping bag. It's uh, kind of lavish and uh, yeah, yeah, glamorous. Um, so so comfy, comfy and and lavish. For example, yeah, we're off glamping to this amazing African sanctuary. Or imagine glamping in a car uh, carpeted tent with a comfy queen sized bed hmm not my idea of camping probably but yeah if you have money why not um camping in a queen size bed uh right cool in africa why not so that's that's glamping luxurious uh or glamorous camping glamping nice okay um goat i mean this is not the the animal because the, the first thing that comes to mind when when you see the word goat um is probably the the, the nice horned animal uh, but this is actually uh, an acronym, like uh, first letter of four words put put together. Any any ideas uh, what what uh, goat stands for actually? Because it's used um, well very often to describe um, some sports people, yeah, or some 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 films or objects of of art. Um, goat actually um, stands for greatest of all time. So, uh, as I said, uh, we use it to describe a person or, or thing that uh, we consider to be the best ever in a, in a particular field or uh, category, uh, especially in, in sports nowadays. Uh, let's have a look at some examples. Uh, if he hadn't been injured, he would have been the GOAT, but he's still a top five player or um, about a film. That film is indisputably good. I watch it at least once a year. Uh, yeah, maybe that's why they show us the same films um, for Christmas every year. Um, and the last example, Michael Jordan has been called the GOAT because, well, he is. I guess, yeah, he's undoubtedly, for many people, the best basketball player ever. So he's the, the real GOAT. Okay, so not the animal, but just greatest of all time, the GOAT. Um, Hangry. Oh, that's another blend word. Um, so what, what, what two words um, have been put together here? Hangry. Hmm. Looks strange. Any ideas? Well, one word is clearly visible, but <laughs> it's obviously, uh, yeah, hungry and, and angry put together. So, um, yeah, when, when you feel strong irritation um, and you're angry, because, well, you're hungry, then, yeah, irritable, that's right, uh, then we can use this word. So, irritated, 
because you feel hungry. So special word just to describe this feeling, hangry. For example, uh, I need to stop for lunch soon, I'm getting hangry. Or uh, some people get hangry when their blood sugar levels drop and their irritability rises. Uh, I hope uh, no one is feeling uh, hangry. Uh, let's let's move on. <laughs> okay, um, hodophobia. Well, we have plenty of phobias, here, like irrational fears of different things. And have you have you um, encountered the, 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 the phrase hodophobia? And and what kind of fear is is that? Any any ideas? What can hodophobia refer to? Well, this is uh, simply fear of of traveling, like irrational or disproportionate fear of traveling. Um, and like in this this example, in the aftermath of 9-11, thousands of health professionals noted a steep rise in cases of exaggerated fear, with hodophobia being among the most often reported. Uh, I guess uh, due to due to COVID and the pandemic. Uh, some people might, might suffer from hodophobia um, last year or, or this year, so uh, maybe not as many as after 9-11, but yeah, traveling is not easy or safe uh, nowadays, at least to some places in the world. So that's hodophobia, irrational fear of traveling. Right. Um, very short word, ish. Basically, well, we know it as a, as a suffix that we add to some to some adjectives so like green greenish yeah so resembling green or almost like green or kind of green but now um it's also it also became a, a, a standalone word um which might be used to to express approximately kind of exactly very good answer uh so yeah we use it to, to modify or moderate something that we stated previously uh, or when we want to give like kind of a vague answer, vague reply to a question, yeah? not clear. Uh, so yeah, exactly. It means in a way, not exactly, approximately, kind of, that's right. Uh, for example, um, it's a decentish place to work. So, so decent, but not really that decent. Okay. Are you tired? Yeah, ish. So like, yeah, I'm kind of tired. Um, I'd like to get married, ish. Hmm. Maybe I will not comment on this one, uh, but I guess this person is not really mm, sure if they want to get married or not. So that's that's ish. Um, information bubble. That's uh, well, we use this um, term in our language as as well, especially nowadays with uh, well so much social media and different groups of people. Um, another another term is media bubble. Yeah, so information bubble, aka also known as uh, media bubble. So basically, some closed um, environments uh, in which uh, one's exposure to, to news or entertainment or social media um, represents like only one ideological or, or cultural perspective. And, and everyone who uh, represents something else is excluded. Um, so only, only one point of view is, is accepted. So sometimes when you, when you look at social, social networks, uh, social websites, yeah, it's like, um, like TVP, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, state of intellectual isolation, exactly. So basically, you believe you're right, and you only get in touch and discuss or chat with people who have very similar um, point of view, and anyone who who dares to think differently is banned, excluded, or has to go to a different information bubble. Um, to meet some guys who actually share their point of view. So yeah, that's not not very good. But I guess some people forgot how to how to discuss and exchange um, views. Uh, for example, uh, some voters just live in a right wing media bubble, or um, blockbuster superhero films dominated the media bubble last last summer. Um, yeah. So state of intellectual isolation, exactly. Very good answer. So not not a very good thing happening, but uh, yeah, that's that's the reality, unfortunately. All right. Um, the next word is janky. Um, might seem a bit similar to to junky, spelled with a U, but this one is spelled with with an A, and the meaning is actually kind of similar. 
because if uh, something is janky, it's uh, inferior in quality, or it's not working or operating properly, or when we want to use it to talk about a person, such a person is um, something run down, exactly. Um, untrustworthy, distributable, something undesirable, or um, referring to something run down, yeah, dilapidated or run down part of the of the city, for example, yeah, like when you think about about Detroit, the motor town, motor city, I guess, big part of Detroit is dilapidated, run down, or just janky. And some some examples, um, like a low budget janky recording. So here here janky means simply low quality, inferior, right? A janky old car. So hmm, something's always break down. Yeah, um, he's a good guy, but has some weird and janky friends. Yeah, so some disreputable undesirable friends like with bad reputation yeah or he's from the janky part of town where there was a shooting the other night so yeah not the best part of town quite the opposite a janky part of town so um kind of negative word that can be used to describe a lot of things from from places people quality of things or, or just meaning that something keeps breaking down okay then we have uh, another very short word lit um, I guess we know it as, as the, the past form and, and, and the third form of the verb light, but here, mm, well, it doesn't really have much to do with, with, with light or anything like that. Uh, if we describe something as, as lit, uh, we mean uh, excellent. Yeah, exactly. Good answer. Uh, that something, something is, is very intense, fun, exciting, like an event or, or some situation party sports event or anything like like that for example last night's uh, party was lit or today's rally was really lit rally is like a big gathering of people outside who who gathered to to support something or or to protest against something like we know it from from the streets of of our cities um women are are protesting they held hold rallies yeah? and the same in in washington dc um just just before um, Biden was sworn in, there was also a big rally of of Trump's fans. So that's a, that's a rally. And but I guess that gathering was not that lit, but for them probably exciting. Uh, so lit. Mm, okay, mansplaining. Um, well, again, a blend of two two words. Um, which which words have been blended here to create mansplaining? And and what is that? Let's wait for some answers. Men never plaint. Um, okay, what do we mean by plaint? Mm, so uh, men definitely, uh, and uh, if if someone is, is mansplaining, that's that's basically a man explaining something to to a woman in a kind of uh, patronizing manner. Yeah, looking down on her, feeling better. Yeah. Um, often without without relevant knowledge of, of experience because men simply know better, right? Like in the old patriarchal society, right? Uh, that's the old school way. Um, for example, uh, he, he mansplains to her about female friendships. Hmm, okay. Uh, stop mansplaining things to me or uh, I know some women who are guilty of mansplaining. Well, maybe women also talk to one another like that sometimes. Uh, so yeah, mansplaining like typical way of explaining done by a man uh, so probably kind of a negative negative term but uh, still we can see such things um, happening uh, nothing burger okay we know cheeseburger Big Mac whatever but this is nothing burger so what is what is nothing burger because well it seems like a burger with nothing inside but then what kind of burger that is um, so we can we can um, Okay, someone's typing something, so let's let's wait. Empty burger. Yeah, it's it's that's it. So we can use it to to describe um, an event, uh, like highly publicized event or a situation that uh, basically was supposed to have big impact on the world or anything, but in fact um, it wasn't that important or that good. Exactly, or nobody as well. 
Um, so, so yeah, something that, that was less significant or less important than it was supposed to be. Also, yeah, kind of like nobody, a person of little or, or no importance is a, is a nothing burger. Um, let's look at some examples. Um, the meeting of world leaders turned out to be a big nothing burger. Yeah, like fat cats just meet and talk and nothing changes, right? Uh, she's a minor celebrity and nothing burger, but of course she thinks otherwise, right? Uh, people have been rehashing this for months, but it's a total nothing burger. Um, pay attention to the spelling because uh, you can find mm, two different uh, variations of, of, of the spelling. Sometimes you can see this word spelled together as one word, or sometimes people spell it uh, separately, like nothing burger. Uh, that's why in the first two examples I used the first variation of spelling and the other two, um, the other one which is spelled separately, like, don't worry, his allegations are a complete nothing burger. I wasn't even in the office that day. Yeah, so simply nothing or somebody of not, no real importance and nothing burger. Uh, noob. I'm pretty sure you know these, this one. Who is a noob? What kind of person? All right. Opposites to muster. Definitely, yes. Some synonyms, maybe? What other word, also starting with N, could we use instead of noob? All right, someone is typing something up, so let's wait. A new, yeah. Loser, okay, loser is spelled with one O. Beginner, yes, exactly, or simply uh, a newbie. Uh, a different uh, spelling variant is a noob spelled with two zeros in the middle instead of double O. We can also see it, especially um, online, a newcomer, that's right. So a person who is new to some online community and whose um, online participation or interactions display like a clear lack of skill or knowledge, like also used among video game players. Yeah, When you start playing a game, you have no experience, you're a, you're a noob. Um, that's right. So some games and gaming forums are crawling with annoying noobs. Yeah, so like pros and experts are really annoyed uh, when, when there are lots of noobs around. And who let all these noobs join our team? We're going to get trounced. Trounced simply means like defeated badly, yeah, like destroyed. Uh, yeah, not good to have lots of noobs on your, on your team. Okay, uh, people kind. Well, not, not much to say about this word. This is simply like a, like a gender neutral uh, alternative to, to the term mankind or, or womankind or human race. Uh, so basically um, it's used mostly in an ironic way uh, when, when some people like satirize um, inclusive language. Yeah? So um, when they want to have fun and at political correctness or, or gender neutral language, um, you can you can use yeah, the word people kind instead of saying mankind yeah, because why why mankind is people kind right? So mostly mostly used in a in a sarcastic way, but that's that's people kind. Um, let's annoy everyone and say people kind. Uh, yeah, definitely some people get annoyed when they when they hear the, the word people kind. Um, ratio. Um, I guess we know this word from from mathematics, uh, but here uh, it has a slightly um, different meaning related to, uh, okay, finance, absolutely, we can find it in finance, in math. Um, uh, the meaning I want, to, I want to show you today is more um, related to social media and, and internet. So basically, uh, apart from this mathematical definition of ratio like three to one or um, there's like kind of like Twitter centric meaning um, where uh, ratio um, is used as a, as a verb which simply means uh, to, 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 to flood um, a tweet or, or the author of, of this tweet with negative replies. Um, a lot of negative replies yeah, that, that commenters uh, as a group take control of the momentum and message away from the original poster. Yeah? So something gets so many negative commands that, that the original message simply disappears, is flooded yeah? with all those, all those bad and negative comments. So we could say that somebody gets ratioed. Yeah? We use it as a, as a verb here. Uh, for example, yeah, if, you, if you write an inflammatory tweet, you might get ratioed. Yeah? So you might receive so many negative comments that, that 
basically nobody will, will remember what, what you meant. Um, or, well, well, don't mind me. I'm just here for the ratio. Yeah? So I'm just commenting just to, um, just to create this momentum of flooding some, some message or tweet that I don't like with some negative comment. Yeah? So to, uh, to get ratioed, this is the, the phrase. Uh, so nothing to do with mathematics, really. Well, maybe a little bit. Um, snowflake. All right, it's winter. It was snowing today, I guess. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, but as a person, who who is a snowflake? Like any any ideas who a snowflake might might be? What do you think? Like, what comes to to mind when when you think about snowflake describing a person? Okay, someone's typing something up. So let's wait. A snowflake. Uh, when someone is delicate, okay, in a way, absolutely. Um, so a, a snowflake, um, basically, this is someone who, who believes strongly uh, in their own uniqueness yeah, and struggles to, to um, take criticism. Yeah? So this is this kind of, of person. Yeah? I'm unique and you don't criticize me because, you know, I'm the best or whatever uh for example uh yeah she can't cope with anyone challenging her she's a precious snowflake or uh i have 28 special snowflakes in my classroom and their parents demands make teaching impossible so here's an unlucky teacher uh and you snowflakes need to leave your safe spaces and engage with people who disagree with your beliefs so yeah so a snowflake a person who basically believes that they are unique and and doesn't take to criticism kindly mm, okay Sharon oh, that's one of my favorites actually again uh, kind of a blended word and what two words have been put together here what do you think give me some ideas share and rent okay Almost share for sure, but rent. Um, I would add like two more, two more letters at the beginning of rent, and the first, uh, the first letter is a P, actually. So, who, who is a Sharon? Because this is actually uh, okay. Someone who frequently shares, a parent, exactly. So uh, a Sharon, um, yeah, as a verb, it means to to frequently use social media to share photos or, or other details and information about about your child. Uh, and as a noun, uh, we can use it to describe such a person, yeah, a parent who, who shares all the intimate details uh, about, about their kids online, yeah, so kind of, kind of dangerous. So that's who a sharent is, like a sharing parent, yeah. Um, some examples of how we might use this word. Uh, if you've spent all day sharenting, you should put the phone down. Good idea. Uh, and if you're going to Sharon, be sure to check your privacy settings to control who sees your post. Uh, in Polish, Matka Instagram. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Many such moms, I guess. Uh, maybe they have too much free time or something, or they just, they are so proud. Um, yeah, so take control of your privacy settings for sure. Uh, take that eager excitement of potty training and talk about it online, and you are now a Sharon. Yeah, some people. Are so proud that their their babies learned how to use a potty that they feel obliged to share it with the world, yeah. And uh, the real reason for sharing is narcissism, mm, probably, yeah, one of the reasons. Okay, so that's that's a sharing, um, like an oversharing parent might be dangerous sometimes, but yeah. Okay, um, social distance. Well, no need to explain it here, but mm, it's. Basically, a verb. Yeah, it started to be using as a, as a verb. So, of course, we know that to social distance is like maintain a safe or appropriate distance from from other people, um, and just to slow the spread of a contagious, like infectious illness or disease. Um, and this phrase is used as a, as a verb nowadays. Yeah. So, amid COVID, we've all learned how to social distance from each other. Or, uh, mom's trying hard to social distance, though she misses her weekly bingo game yeah, so to social distance so um not only a noun phrase but it also it's also used as um, as a verb um well hopefully we will not have to social distance ourselves from the world soon but well if you're optimistic yeah, we'll see uh okay stan mm, of course it's a beautiful male name but actually 
uh, stan uh, is also like a blended word, like two words put put together. And um, what do you think this one might might mean? What two two words have been put together uh, here? A very short word, actually. Um, yeah, one of the words that is um, here has been shortened quite a bit. So actually, uh, a stan is a is a combination of stalker and fan. So basically, we use this word to to describe like a devoted fan yeah, who goes to great lengths to to obsess with their idol. Uh, for example, I stand the entire cast of Avengers, or he's my favorite rapper, but I don't stand for him. So it can also be used as a verb, right? Or uh, I started looking up her music and I quickly became a stan. He has like obsessed fan, so also kind of informal and, and slang term. Uh, okay, swole, uh, another of my favorite ones. Um, we might know it as, as the past of the verb to swell. Uh, swell, swell, swollen. Uh, but if somebody can be described as swole, what do you think it might it might mean actually? Swole. Um, well, a part of, of being like the past tense um, of swell, uh, it can also mean like the state of being muscular, or very muscular, or to have a well-defined physique. Yeah. So exactly, very muscular. Uh, good answer. And yeah, the dude over there is swole as hell. Or keep working out if you want to get swole. Or if you're looking to get swole, I can show you a great workout. Or he's showing off some pretty swole arms. Yes, yeah, so very muscular arms. Um, kind of difficult to show off in in winter, but I guess spring is coming. So soon we'll be we'll be having lots of swole people in the street uh, showing off with their with their muscles. Okay. Uh, Tacklash, again another blend of of two of two words. Um, any ideas um, of uh, well what this word means and actually which which were technical clash? Okay, so technology technical for sure, but lash is is uh, short for a backlash. Yeah, so like strong negative reaction. So basically, uh, yeah, a portmanteau, yeah, so like a blended word, uh, technology and backlash. Yeah, so backlash is strong negative reaction and, and techlash uh, refers to, to this kind of negative reaction and backlash against um, all those big tech corporations, yeah, the largest technology companies uh, or their employees or products uh, because more and more people are um, concerned yeah, about their, uh, well, these companies, these corporations growing um, in, in power, yeah, about users per privacy or the possibility of political manipulation. So it's, it's very easy to uh, make people believe uh, strange ideas nowadays. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's tech lash, like uh, strong negative reaction against the latest technology or some big technical corporations which can influence the world, politics, economy, everything. Um, for example, um, there is a growing regulatory tech lash partly fueled by concerns about privacy on social media platforms. Yeah, like uh, if you can you know, block the account of, of Twitter account of the president of the United States, then you are really powerful. Yeah, so that's tech lash. Yeah. Trump fans were really um, shocked by by this move and decision. So that's a good example of, of tech lash. Um, world building. Um, there's nothing to explain about this one. Um, another word from from a kind of pop culture of related to to making uh, films, games, writing books. Uh, so simply, uh, it's a process of, of developing a detailed and, and plausible, like plausible, believable, right? Uh, some fictional world for, for a novel, a story, or a video game. Uh, genres like science fiction, fantasy, like if you think about Game of Thrones, um, the author did some seriously good world building. Yeah? Probably he started with drawing a map. Uh, yeah, for example, yeah, drawing a convincing map with boundaries and landscape features is a natural starting point for world uh, building, right? Um, Zaddy, hmm, another one of, of my favorites. Hmm. So who is who is a Zaddy? Because this is this is a person. Maybe maybe you've heard the word somewhere, or you have some ideas what it might 
mean actually because this is uh, this word refers to to a specific kind of of of, uh, of man of male uh, handsome yeah absolutely so so as zaddy as like you know an exceptionally attractive appealing fashionable guy with swag and sex appeal uh so some examples here check out the guy outside he's a total zaddy or yeah he's got a nice face but he's always wearing basketball shorts i want a zaddy so if you want to be a zaddy guys don't wear basketball shorts um this bar is amazing nothing but zaddies as far as the eye can see wow paradise right and don't look now but there's a zaddy with the most immaculate beard i've ever seen coming this way well yep some guys really like looking after themselves so we might call them zaddies Probably they are swole as well, right? Um, so really good looking. Um, okay, another word starting with Z, uh, Zoz. Looks strange, sounds strange as well. So uh, Zoz, or actually even Zoz up, because it's, it's usually followed um, uh, with uh, with up, um, it means to, to make something more lively or, or interesting, more stylish or more appealing. Um, just by making a small change or, or some small addition um, or a Zaz can be this thing that we that we add to make something more more appealing more stylish for for example uh, well try zazzing up your living room with some fresh flowers yeah so these fresh flowers can be referred to as a Zaz yeah we're using them to Zaz up the living room or give your hair a quick Zaz with a curling iron and mousse why not then maybe you can become a Zaddy uh, and I've been told my writing could use a little more Zaz like I should make it more more attractive um, somehow um, and another one starting with Z Zoodles so I guess uh, Looks very similar to some to some other words. Basically, only the first letter um, has been has been changed. So, so what comes to mind when you see uh, the word zoodles? Any any ideas? I guess seems pretty obvious. Mm, okay, some answer is coming. Oh, nothing came yet. All right. So of course, um, when you see zoodles you think about about noodles yeah and and zoodles are actually like strips strips of zucchini uh, also known as uh, courgette yeah like shaped like like noodles so if you if you're afraid uh, or worried about your, your your calorie intake and you don't want to eat noodles because you think that they are uh, they contain too too many calories then you can you can switch to to zoodles and have like yeah zucchini noodles kind of uh, for example I had tomato sauce with zoodles tonight it was delicious or add chicken broth lemon juice and zest zucchini noodles and favas and cook for three to four minutes tossing with tongs until zoodles are tender uh, favas that's another phrase for broad beans very kind of popular in, in Poland because this is just uh, something we call boop right uh, so a sentence taken from some from some um, recipe okay so maybe you can try some zoodles um, uh, if, you, if you feel like instead of instead of um, noodles um, okay um, so this way we, we got like to to the end so um, thank you thank you very much for for attending um, I hope you have learned something uh, and some of these words um, you will find uh, find useful and you can spice up your your vocabulary uh, or um, yeah, use them whatever way, way you want so once again thank you I wish you a pleasant evening um, and hope to see you next time some sometime in the in the future have a good evening thank you so much bye bye